And today we are talking trash, specifically trash in the Bay Area and cleaning it all up. Now there is a new high tech tactic to do the dirty work. Joining me now is Dr. Tony Hale with the San Francisco Estuary Institute and Paul Appleby with Connecticut. Thank you guys so much for joining me this Thanks afternoon. For Thanks so for us. obviously, you know, we're used to picking up trash on the ground, but you guys are taking a different point of view here from the sky. That's right. That's right. I mean, identifying uh, the hot spots for trash is something that's very time intensive. It's very uh, spatially limited. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to put boots on the ground, people to kind of identify where those hotspots are. So we thought, why not use a new technology using drones to fly above those areas? Uh, we're able to then uh, go further spatially as well as uh, hit places more often because trash is ephemeral. Eph ephemeral. It's sure. here, it's there. And then once we identify those hotspots, then you can send people, crews in to kind of pick up the, the trash and take action. Because, you know, besides the curb pickups, you know, when there is a pile of trash, you're really, right. these cities and counties are depending on people to call it in, right? People, organizations, uh, sometimes it's nonprofits who take the extra step, but cities are responsible for, for uh, beginning the cleanup process. And um, how yeah. is Connecticut? partnered up in this? Yeah, if you think about the scale of the problem, we're not just talking about the city, but we're talking about the Bay as well. And that's where technology can really play a part, combining both the drone technology, which identifies where the trash is located, um, but also artificial intelligence to identify the source of, uh, of that trash and the location of that trash enables us, enables us to be far more effective in the cleanup, um, but also identify the source of trash before it gets into the Bay and ultimately into the food chain. Which we have seen before. We've seen people dumping trash in our waters. Yeah. And so have you guys flown up? And what have you seen? Well, we've, we've actually visited now um, 60 sites throughout California. Um, not only in the Bay Area, but also in Southern California. And um, it's been very illuminating. Uh, we've gathered over 30,000 images, which uh, if you just had to go through the imagery and, and see if there's trash there, it would be an insurmountable task. Wow. So that's why we needed this artificial intelligence as an extra you know, mechanism to detect the trash. And that's where you know, Paul's work, um, Paul's team at Connecticut has really helped us to uh, you know, kind of take that extra step. And yeah, we're seeing some of these images here right now, right? Talk about some of these images that we're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Tony hit the nail right on the head there where we're talking about scale. Um, if you think about just the Bay Area, you ex expand that out to California and then you start to think about the whole problem with trash right around the world, the only way you can address that problem, which is beyond human scale, scale is with machines and machine intelligence and technology. So it's not just here in the Bay Area, but we're working with the World Economic Forum, uh, governments in Singapore and also in Denmark in not only identifying trash and sources of trash, but using uh, drones, aquatic drones to uh, remediate things like oil spills. Hmm. Um, so it's actually taking that whole life cycle of technology to not only identify trash itself, but you know, focus on remediation and how we can use technology to address this mega scale global problem. Tell me about the trash here in the Bay Area. What has been the most surprising thing that you guys have seen out there? Yeah, well, you saw in some of the imagery that we were just looking at just how challenging it is to uh, discern the trash from some of the vegetation and some of the rocks that you see. It's, it's remarkably difficult to tell the difference between a plastic bag and a, and a rock. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of the, the work we've been doing is uh, leveraging the, the partnership we have with Connecticut to tune the model to detect only what we want it to detect, right? So uh, right now we're focusing on telling the difference between plastic and non-plastic mm -hmm. trash because that's something that people really want. But we're also working with the California Department of Public Health to uh, focus on tobacco waste. So wow. now Cigarettes it's a matter of going ground. small. Yeah, it's a matter of going really small to see cigarette butts from the sky. That's, uh, that's a really exciting development. Sure. Um, and the California Ocean Protection Council, I should mention, has funded this project. And so they're really trying to, to, to get out ahead of some of, the, uh, some of the steps that people are taking. They're, what people are doing is, is they're putting bag bans in place. They are putting straw bans in place. But then the question is, are these effective? Mm -hmm. Are we seeing now fewer bags? Are we seeing fewer straws in the environment? So and you need these tools to be able to judge your, your performance of what these have decisions. You, what have you seen? Are we seeing fewer bags out there? 
project? Well, we're still seeing a lot of historic trash. It's a little bit hard to tell at this point because these these um, regulations have just been put into effect. But what we would hope is that this library of over 30,000 images set a baseline so that we can revisit those sites, refly those sites, mm -hmm. and judge whether we are effective in the future. Now, you know, we have drone pilots here at our station, mm -hmm. Paul, and you know, we know that we can't fly everywhere. So what have been some of the challenges for you when you fly those drones? Yeah, um, it, it is an interesting challenge when you, you know, look at the restrictions related to drones, but we're also taking in data from multiple other sources, and that's the, the value of this, um, value of, of communities on the ground providing information. Um, so the drones only become really one source of data. We're able to capture all of that data from governments, from communities, from not-for-profits, and from the drones, and bring all of this together to develop a strategy for remediation. And that's, you know, that's really the key, the key component. Uh, additionally, what we're finding with governments is when you're using drones for a purpose like mm -hmm. this, um, you know, there's a lot more flexibility in terms of fly zones and areas that you can utilize the drone. It's not being used, used for commercial purposes. It's actually about contributing something back to the community. What Paul said is absolutely true. Um, we've found that uh, different city programs, the East Bay Parks District, for instance, they're very open to making these exceptions for scientific sure. endeavor, right? So they don't want necessarily casual drone users out there um, serving as a nuisance, but they do want to support some of these efforts to make a positive change. They see this as tools. a benefit to the community. Yes. So quick last question for you. We just have a few seconds mm -hmm. here. What is the big picture? for the Bay Area. I mean, are we going to, do you think, see a cleaner Bay Area because of this? Cleaner California? That's absolutely the mission. Um, we talked about this being a mega scale problem, uh, and it's a problem not just for governments and how we leverage this data um, within the government uh, world to actually address trash, but it's actually giving this data back to communities. We all love to contribute to our local community and make an impact, and the whole idea is to pr present this data back to the community and allow them to be far more targeted in how they deal with their local area. All right, well, you know what? Picking up trash used to be a dirty job. Now we can do it from the air. <laughs>